Hey guys, so today I'm going to review about between Keno Koki and Gustin. Uh, what I found particularly interesting on this bout uh, is really that, I mean, like, Keno is obviously one of the shortest fencers out there. But for some reason, he, he just doesn't feel like he ever gets pushed around, right? He's very active. And I found it very interesting how he, he kind of picks a role, picks a decision, and then just commits to it, whether it can be good or bad at some times, uh, but just uh, the, the sheer willingness to just stick to a plan is amazing. So let's start watching, uh, and then let me know if you guys like this, uh, this setup a bit more. I thought showing my face would remove some anonymity, not that I have much, but uh, maybe the last barrier and really put on my nerd glasses, so you'll know I'm paying attention. Right, so Gustin being a very pokey French grip, right? He he, he really fans like not that nobody fences to win, but like he he will bore you to death if he has to. And uh, the first point in this match, in my opinion, will be very important, right? Because no one wants to be the guy chasing this match. As there's a lot of feeling right now. They're just feeling the distance. Right? We really know it how they're barely passing tip to tip, right? Like they're rarely going past tip to tip because it leaves them out of it, it keeps them at a safe distance while checking out reactions. And see as you see there, just watch how you can kind of pick you can kind of see the reaction, right? See it's counterattacks naturally All right so one minute passivity this does go against Gustai but a lot of people like to run it out nowadays anyway uh, but in theory if there were to be black cards Gustai would be the one lower ranked coming into this tournament A bit more active is what we're seeing, but still, like they're just hanging out in the middle. They no one wants to really force the error yet. Notice how Kano just backs up, barely any hand movement. So he just backs up, takes a six, but realistically, he wasn't planning on hitting or anything. So, I, I personally don't think that hit, but. I like lit up on the way back. In my opinion, it didn't hit. There's a bit of controversy here, but let me know what you guys think. So they give it. Props to Kano for not like flipping out, but it is what it is. Sometimes you got to take the L and move on. Because uh, arguing here probably wouldn't amount to much. All right, so now it could be the nerves, but look at how much, like, oh, so right. So for this is probably one of the first times. See, the, they're they're roughly tip to tip, probably a little closer, but now like they, oh, like something needs to happen here. They're both about an arm's throw from from hitting each other. And then Kano does the wise thing. So one thing you could practice in your bouts is at any point where things start getting a little rocky, take a step back and make sure you're comfortable. And he tries to flick it in and Gustin doesn't have the time to react. So it's kind of unforced error by Gustin and Kano uh, just take, taking advantage of what's in front of him. It's just good mechanics all around. But look how there's a lot of... Um, Kano does a lot of blade waving. Uh, and it's not too eccentric for the most part. But a lot of a lot of it is fluff just to, just to distract. Because otherwise, Gustain has all the time in the world to just kind of pick and choose. 
Uh, and we are going to see how that can work against you sometimes. But uh, used properly, all this fluff is, uh, I think, it's just a great tool. You can really give some false info. All right, watch how he's showing parries mixed in with counterattacks. Parries, counterattack, parry. Oh, as the dis as the distance sneaks in. Right, so we saw everything before. Right, distance, distance, showing eight. But then he just creeps in. Look at that, that little creep oh boy and then sh the six comes out all right so a lot of it is you he use conditioning your opponent i'm showing parry showing parry shows eight and all of a sudden your opponent is very focused on trying to go through that parry then he forgets about the distance you sneak it in so it's, it's a bit of a diversionary tactic and this was done primarily with the blade Right, so a minute break and like I don't know what you'd be thinking here like if you're Kano you're like you you kind of ideally you want to avoid being at the back because you don't want to let him set up so you want to I would want to keep in the middle but at the same time like Kano's kind of in command here ish if you're Gustang you want to get the push in but I I would say be more uh, mindful of the distance uh, as he he just gets the next one he's, he gets too close so let's see what these guys do. You see, this nice tip is very active. Right, so check out that little creep here. Right, so you see right. body language is showing four, but the tip, look at how ready that tip is. Nice. So let's see how that came about. So here, see, so even myself, I could feel the bout slowing down a little bit, and all of a sudden, Kano takes advantage of that. So let's look. So this is great. Look at Gustain's, uh roughly where his tip is. All right, so it's up, back. He's probably going to bring it down, yeah. Up, and then I would imagine another down, another down. It's down, you're not getting it up, nope. And he goes in, so that was uh, Kano reading the situation really, really, really well. Wow, so like Gustav has really got the point control in there. Yeah, Kano wants out. Oh man, he does not want to be pushed that far. Nice. So this is where see look at that. Too big. Right, so he's he's giving too much fluff. Gustav just has to put his tip in the general range. Yeah. A little big, right? So, Gustain knows that if he just keeps his tip on the hand on hand level and keeps forcing these freakouts at the back of the piece, he, he won't necessarily get it every time, but he's putting the odds in his favor. 
right? Because uh, Kano effectively ran into that. And you feel a little silly, because... And it's gonna hurt, especially, uh... Especially on the old ego. Right, so now Kano's probably like, he doesn't want to be back there. Or at least, he doesn't want to be back there on terms that aren't his. Ah. So that was rushed. That was, uh... I didn't really see a reason to go. So the only thing I can think of here is he read the down, but Kustain was pretty relatively ready. He's still kind of off guard, but just really, really, really forced. Gustang trying to force the push. So let's see, why was that a double? He's being really aware with this tip. In my opinion, Kano got a little lucky to have a double there, but the decision, right? He, he picked his decision and he went for it, which is something that a lot of us could work on in our bouts. Did he step out? Uh, yeah, I guess. That's fine. See how Kano's being a little bit less wild with his hand? Very controlled, so it doesn't give this time much to go for. All right, so look at that. So big distance. Gustain says, I need to force something. And honestly, the idea is not that bad. The old cutover, or you know, the, the, the old drawer pull. But it doesn't actually get over it. Kano is just too man mode. So Kano just says, I'm parrying, plants his feet. Well done. Hard to say though, did he get over and just miss? Let's see, look at these frames. I did get over, but the action might have been a little bit too big. Either Ikeno did this here, which was why he probably felt safe to try it, or at least to go with that reaction. So next minute, right? So I would imagine Gustav's still going to try to press the issue. He, he needs that point. And it's, you know, last three minutes. Something's got to give. But I have a feeling like Kano's just not going to want to leave this side of the strip. Right, so... Big thing is uh, Kano, after getting punished once, really tight in his hand. Like it's nowhere near as big as it was during the, earlier in the bout. So suspicions confirmed the weapon was faulty. Such is life. I don't think it's malintention from Gustain. Uh, the dude is a stand-up gentleman, so I don't. Uh, I don't think there's any foul play at hand here.
be curious to see if Kano goes past here again. Next point is huge. All right, it's stepped out. Okay, so now I feel like Kano's going to want to get out of there. I think something's going to give. Nice. Look at that. Sneak in. His weight is very forward for Gustin. So look at the last look at the last three, like where he kind of enters the distance. And look at how very similar they are to each other, right? One. Two. It's so hard to predict. And then he actually just split, uh, plants his feet down and goes in. I'd be curious part of his reasoning was because the tip was so low, so he figured worst case is a double. But either way, very good commitment. So now Gustin is in so much trouble. Against a machine gun of a hand that is Kano. Look at... Like what's so incredible, impressive is look how much they're they're working for these hits, right? Just on the leg, like purely on the footwork. Stepped off. Oof. Right, so he doesn't want to be back here. When Gustin gets to set up distance, dangerous. So let's see what caused them. Boom. I don't want to be here. Yeah, so he finds the eight. But this time, look how Gustav's pretty loaded on the legs. So he's got at least one solid retreat. Kano's effectively finished his attack. So out here, it's just an infighting. But because Gustav was in a better kind of balanced position, he was able to get that. Right, so Gustav's probably looking to push. He wants Kano back there. I I think Kano's just going to try to stop him before that. It's just good fencing. Oh, okay. Right, so they're far, right? You need probably a step to get to the hand. They both kind of step in. Out. He doesn't move. He sneaks it. Shows up. Doesn't really sneak out. And then you just... Mm. Really, really good. So the, those kind of hit, obviously, like... It can't really be premeditated. These are things... This kind of leg discipline you can practice... Uh, like during a bout, right? All your only goal, oh, right during a bout, your only goal is to get just far enough away, so you can, you know, just have a bout where that's it. I want to be just enough that I can hit right as soon as they, as soon as they fall short, I'm hitting kind of deal. Uh, it's just you're gonna be exhausted at the end of the day, but it'll be so worth it. So let's see. Oh, so you hit him with a bit of a bamboozle, a bit of a surprise, middle of the strip instantly. So lock, locks the legs, lock and load it still, gets in close, and then just finishes high hand. Because he knows, like he, obviously you've been hit with eight so many times this bout. So what do you do against an eight? Get above it. So I guess I really tried to rush that with the drawer pull again. Kano was more balanced. And then here, yeah. 
So in my opinion, this is a bit of a rushed action. 45 seconds left. I wouldn't have... Obviously, like, it's some hindsight fencing, but a little rushed on that one. Nice. So now he's just giving them the old leave me alone doubles. Look at it. Nice. Look at the commitment. Eight. Show six. See how he brings his hand up? I think this is, uh, good double. Also, now he's just not letting Gustain do much. As soon as Gustain even gets close to breathing on him, Kane was just going in. That was wicked close. Backs up, backs up. Yeah, so see that? So super, like, he's probably told himself as soon as he gets within X distance, I'm going in, I'm sweeping eight. Because look at kind of the, in slow-mo, you can really break it down. He knows he's going to get the extension. And as soon as he sees anything, he just sweeps and keeps going. Since he, he was kind of in the priority of the action sequence, he ends up getting it. But, like, look at still how deadly close that was for Gustain to almost get that hit look at how easy it is to throw a lead against this guy like oh, I'm just gonna flesh well guess what getting counterattacked so this is just like the invisible hand of pressure So he's just not going to let Gustain set anything up. So gig, I'm guessing given the last one is a straight counterattack, he's not going to sweep. He's just going to go straight. So let's see. Just straight. You stay stepped off. Oh. So obviously, like, we can nitpick. There's eight seconds left. You stay has got to do something, right? Low, I wonder what was. Oh, God, that is just like taking a lesson. But I like the. So look at that. So, yeah, yeah, he got hit in six, but look at how instinctively, right? He went for the preem, so he was kind of expecting a six. It just came in so fast. Right? So when someone takes you six, you're able to preem. So his, his gut reaction was to preem, which is. Hats off, sir. And then, yeah, that's not much. One second per touch, not looking likely. All right, so super, super interesting bout. Uh, Kano's like he uses a lot of hand gestures, but they're actually backed up by like this super steady footwork, right? So footwork is at the the center of this base, and it's just beautiful to watch. But at the same time, right, if your hand is so wild, you're actually doing all the work for your opponent, especially French grapes. You're just gonna get nicked on the hand as you're being a little too wild. So I hope you guys learned something from this. Uh, let me know if you like the new format. I, I figured 
Uh, I've been looking at my, my little short clips take a lot of work, but uh, they're, granted they're cool. I don't think uh, it, it sounds like you guys enjoy the uh, analysis of a whole bout more than anything. So I thought I'd just bring up the production value on that a bit. Uh, right, got a new new mic here. Hopefully, uh, gets keeps the job going. Uh, and we'll keep trying with the webcam. Uh, let me know what you think. If you got any bouts, anything you want me to analyze, let me know. Otherwise, have a good day and I, I hope you're all being safe and having a good time fencing.